Hey guys, what's going on? This is Shane here from New Hampshire Quails and More. Uh, I wanted to just do a uh, quick little video about uh, how I keep quail in winter and just kind of some of the little things I do a little differently. There's not a whole lot that changes, but wanted to just do a quick short video. But I uh, want to wish you guys all a Merry Christmas, uh, Happy New Year. I hope you guys got some time to spend with the family and friends and enjoy some good food and uh, just got, got some time off from work. But uh, <clears throat> I wanted to talk a little bit about what I do in wintertime with my quail. But first, I kind of want to give you guys just a quick update on my current flock and uh, some of the birds I've got. I've got some different changes uh, to my flock that has happened in the last couple months. It's been about eight weeks since I've done a video. That is just because work has been crazy. I've had a project that's kept me busy for a long time. I have been working a lot of overtime. And then with Christmas and everything else going on, I just haven't had time to get back here and do it. But there's been a lot going on behind the scenes. So I'm going to show you a couple pictures of the birds. We got some new birds out here. <laughs> uh, I want to do a shout out to uh, Gopher Ridge Quail Farm. Uh, most of these birds came from them, as well as Rebecca Lynch over at Thieving Otter Farm. And then uh, just some of my own birds that I've hatched out for my own stock. But uh, there's a bit different. So I'm going to take you down now and show you some of the birds and what's going on with them. Alrighty. So these birds are all from H.P. Uh, Murray there at uh, Gopher Ridge Quail. These are Italians and Pharaohs from his Italian Jumbo Pharaoh line. And I can't say enough just about the quality of these birds. These birds are about eight, nine weeks old right now. They're big. They're already been laying pretty well for me. They're laying really nice size eggs. Um, I mean, like, like 16 gram eggs. And they're just really great temperament. I've had no fighting issues. This is a uh, kind of my breeding area where my breeders are. I've got mostly hens in here, a couple roosters for fertility, but uh, these birds are just fantastic. Beautiful, no fighting issues. The hatch rate for shipped eggs was phenomenal with uh, with HP Murray there. I think I got almost a 70% hatch rate, 75% hatch rate on these guys. Um, again, that was in the Barato Lumio 8. I did a video about that not too long ago. Um, unbelievable incubator unbelievable um just set it and forget it but yeah we've had a great hatch of these guys these are some of the roosters this is the bachelor pad here a bunch of the roosters that came from there these guys are actually about nine weeks old they're going to be uh actually butchered tomorrow um there's a bunch more inside the closed off area these are my whites i hatched out i don't know about 10 or 12 more of these guys the jmf line jumbo whites they're doing great, laying nice eggs. This line started with Southwest Game Birds, and then I've just kind of um, continued breeding them. Um, so these birds are doing fantastic. And, you know, not the biggest birds, you know, 12 to 14 ounce, which is a good size jumbo by any stretch of the imagination. Most of them are about closer to 12 ounces. But uh, the egg size is crazy. They just lay really, really nice eggs. So, uh, you know, it's not always the biggest birds that lay the biggest eggs that's those guys this is my own line that i've been working on these are my breeders of my uh sex link browns um these birds i've been breeding now for about almost two years and this is my current breeding breeding group but these birds are getting close to uh about 16 ounces so these ones have been um this is like the third fourth generation of my own line and uh yeah, this hen right here, she's, I weighed her the other day, she was 16.2. So, really nice size birds for my own stock there. And then, take you down here and show you one of my favorites. I've been getting it. This is from LaBecca Lynch at Thieving Otter Farms, her jumbo pansies. Again, friendly, uh, great temperament, great size birds. There's a couple more inside there, but I've got five of them in here. Um, a breeding group and uh yeah these birds are pushing 14 ounces so nice size birds nice size eggs um can't say enough about her so that's kind of what's going on with my own flock take you back up top and we'll talk about what's going on in uh and what i do in winter with these guys 
All right, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, just kind of seeing what's going on with my own flock of, uh, of quail here. Um, and again, I can't say enough. If you're starting out in quail, you're starting out in Caternix, get good lines to start. <clears throat> um, you know, it's, it's going to pay off. You're going to have big, high-quality birds. And uh, I can't say enough about just starting off on the right foot with the right birds. Um, as far as shipped eggs go, go for Ridge Quail, uh, Thieving Otter Farms. Um, I've never ordered from Brian's Roost, but I've heard a lot of good things about them. Uh, Kansas City Quail Farm, Southwest Game Birds. Obviously, I've had uh, my whites all started there. I don't believe they're shipping hatching eggs anymore, but if you can find someone who has some of their line, um, definitely that's a great quality bird to get into as well. So, all right, enough about that. Let's get into what I do in the wintertime. Well, I live here in New Hampshire. It gets very cold in the winter here. It's been pretty mild so far, so I haven't had to worry about it. I don't change a whole hell of a lot, to be honest, in wintertime. One of the things, the biggest mistake I think I see people make when it comes to keeping quail in the winter is they overdo it. They feel they need heat. They feel they need to close the whole thing in so that, you know, there's, you know, no airflow inside, which is more of an issue than the cold for these guys. Um, these birds are meant for cold. Last year, we had a couple weekends that got down to like negative 15 Navigate 16 here in New Hampshire and in like real temp, not like wind chill. Wind chill is even colder than that. But these birds were, especially this group here where my bachelor pad is, this is all wired in. So they were all hanging out here. They weren't even hanging out in here where they could get away from everything. They don't have a problem with the cold. That's not one of their issues. Um, the summer, when it gets hot, I have more issues in the summer and again, not really issues, but keeping them hydrated. Um, you come out, you'll see them panting a little bit. Um, but in the winter time, as long as they have a way to get out of the elements, like here, these guys can, they, you know, they, they're not getting rained on. They're not getting snowed on. They have a way to get away from the wind that's coming in. As long as they have that and you're feeding them and you're watering them and they have adequate food, adequate water, you don't have to do much. One of the things you can do that I do um, that I do in the winter a little bit is I do kind of go to more of a deep litter method. And again, my birds are on shavings, <clears throat> so I don't necessarily pull all the shavings out. I just kind of keep adding to. So I'll go, you know, maybe once or twice a week, I'll pull off maybe just the top layer of stuff that's like really built up and, and kind of gross. But I leave a lot of the shavings in there and I just keep adding fresh shavings to it. What that does is it basically just lets the shavings naturally compost and create heat and then they sit on it but these birds you know that's one little thing i do another thing i'll do is i'll go ahead and add some scratch grain to their feed um you should be adding uh grit if you're not adding grit please do that you know these birds need that um there is kind of this belief out there that you know because they're eating smaller crumble they don't need grit um birds don't have teeth grit gets in their gizzard and that's how they grind stuff up so all quail all birds should have some form of grit in their diet um but i add the scratch grains it's a little bit bigger it lets their body work a little harder to break it down hence it's creating their own heat in their own system so that's one thing you can do you do have to keep up on water the water freezes so i have you know just i kind of just have these traditional watering systems here you can get kind of crazy and do heated waterers and stuff like that if you want. I just find I come out here, I break up the ice, I put fresh water in and that's all I need to do. Um, but you can kind of do whatever you want. But just make sure they have fresh water. Make sure they have food. They're not, you know, their bodies are going to need that. Um, and then the deep litter thing, I do that. Other than that, you know, and then as, as, if you want to have lights going that's going to get you eggs throughout the winter. If you don't have lights, they're going to stop laying. That's up to you if you want to keep it going or not. I light mine, so I get 16 hours of, uh, of light in here. So these guys have light that comes on um, at night and goes off in the, uh, comes off at night, adds about four hours, and then goes off in the morning. But yeah, other than, other than that, not really much changes. I will tell you, um, if you have a similar setup to this, uh, some more type of hutch system. I've seen some people that like to tarp over everything. That isn't really the greatest idea. These birds need airflow. Um, if you go ahead and tarp over everything and you thinking you're doing them a favor by, you know, keeping it warm in there for them, 
Um, as long as they have a way to get out of the elements and get away from the wind, they're going to be fine. I mean, unless you live in like Arctic conditions, they're, they're going to be okay. You know, quail with chickens, I know some people have issues with that, uh, the, you know, the, the, the frilly thing on top of their head. I'm not a chicken guy. I don't know what that's called. Their comb, there you go, um, can freeze. These birds don't have that, so you don't have to worry about anything like that. But uh, yeah, you know, you don't have to enclose them completely. They do need some airflow still. Um, they're their manure has very very high uh, ammonia so they need a way to have the air kind of circulating in there so as long as they have you know three sides or four sides to their cage and a way to get out of the wind they have a roof over them they're not they're kept dry that's an important thing you don't want to mix them being wet with wind um but as long as they have that they're going to be fine no matter really what kind of conditions you're living in no matter how cold it's going to get you got to also remember if you guys have coats, you have blankets, what are your coats and blankets made of? They're made of bird feathers, most likely, the high quality stuff. These guys have their own insulation kind of put in there. So that's kind of some of the things I do for winter. I don't change a lot. You don't have to change a lot. You don't have to stress about it. Um, another thing, you know, maybe just keep as few birds as you can in winter. That's more for you than it is for them. You know, if it's really cold and you have a ton of birds going on out there, you got to come out, you have to feed more, you have to water more, and you might not want to come out when it's negative 10 degrees outside. So that's just kind of something for you. They don't really need it, but I try to keep, you know, a smaller flock going in the winter and then hatch out in the spring. So hope that answers some of your questions um, about how to keep quail in the wintertime if you live in cold weather climate. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I love talking about these guys, as you can tell. And uh, yeah. Hope you have a great uh, New Year's. Hope you've had a Merry Christmas. And I'll see you again in 2024. Take care. God bless. Bye.